Hey guys, we're hanging out near what used to be a strawberry field in Fountain Valley, California. This is Pedigo's headquarters and I'm with Paula Claire, a product manager for Pedigo. How's it going, Court? Dude, awesome. Good, good. I am stoked because this is like the first mid-drive I have seen from Pedigo. I know. It launched in late right? 2017. It's, it's unique. It's very unique. A lot of the rest of the bike is very similar to uh, the City Commuter. It's, in fact, it's the City Commuter Mid-Drive. That's the name of it. This is one of the first e-bikes I bought way back in like 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. um, you've been with the company for like, si since around then, since around 2012, right? Yep, March of 2012. You know, it's we're gonna be going in and out because we don't wanna get hit by cars, so bear with us, folks. Um, I'm, I'm just excited about how you've preserved a lot of the aesthetics here. And you're offering this in still in three sizes, um, different sort of layouts. So this is the 28 inch wheel size, high step. It's gonna be a little bit stiffer. You're not gonna get as much frame flex. This bike still has a rear mounted battery pack on the rack and it's protected there, but weight, you know, back a little bit higher. Ideally, all the weight would be as low and center as possible. And that's part of what you get with this mid drive. But having the rear rack battery frees up the center of the frame for this nice step through. Okay, and this is a 26 inch wheel size version. They also have a 28 inch wheel size version. So those are the three like sizes. Um, I've been able to, to check out all three of them and measure the standover height, the length, the width, the, all that. So you can tell if it fits in your garage or if you're gonna be comfortable standing over it. I, I rode this one over here cause I have a sensitive knee and I don't especially like swinging my leg up high. And especially if you have a bag or something, it's nice to just be able to step through kind of stand comfortably over the bike. It does weigh a little bit more. I was surprised. We were looking at some of the, the hub motor powered uh, city commuters earlier today, and they weighed like 61.2 pounds, and this one weighs like 62.8 pounds or something. So it's like a pound-ish worth of difference. I did measure the weight of the same. It was, it was the 26 inch version um, as well, and they were looking at the 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery. Pedego has a 15 amp hour battery for people who want to go a little further or expect to be running on high mode or using the throttle a lot because that takes a little bit more power. It drains it quicker. Uh, so there's just there's really a lot of options. Um, but again, the weight situated a little bit lower. It means that even though with these step through designs, you get a little bit more frame flex, you have that approachability and you don't have the hub motor weight, you have the center, which also means you can have quick release front and rear. And that's, that's kind of nice. Like if you have to move the bike around or do some maintenance, flat fixes and stuff. Thankfully, I don't think that's the case very often with these because you do have pre-slimed inner tubes. That's, right. that's what this green cap means right here. There's slime in there. So if you do get a puncture, it's not gonna leak air very long until it sort of heals itself, hopefully. Uh, and also you shouldn't get too many cuts because these Schwabby tires are really nice. Uh, so these are the Schwabby Big Apple on the 26. They are 26 by 2.0, so, you know, medium thickness. They're balancing efficiency. You'll notice the tread on this is fairly efficient. They've got uh, puncture protection, so performance line, race guard, and light skin, so lighter weight sidewalls is what that means, reflective sidewalls. And I like the brushed aluminum color because it's gonna give you that nice visual footprint from the side, in addition to integrated lights, front and rear. So they run off the battery. That's another reason why potentially having a larger battery is a, is a great option. So both models have th these nice reflective tires from Schwabi, but on the, the larger 28 inch, it's the Fat Frank, and this one has active line K guard. So there is slight differences, and this is the anvil blue color. So brushed aluminum over there, a little bit brighter, and then anvil blue. I think this is a, a really beautiful color. Where did you guys pick this from? How did that come about? Uh, you know what, somebody, uh, somebody mentioned a color similar to this, and we did a little research, and and we did some background. Blue is, is one of our most popular colors, but yeah. we wanted to take a little bit of a twist on our, on <laughs> yeah. our casual blue color, regular blue color, and we came up with this and it's, it's been a hit. I like it, I like it a lot. And you know, you can really appreciate the color because it's brought all the way through the fenders, through the chain cover, through the rack that's welded on, really well built, and it's got that little bungee cord loop. It even has the spring latch on top. So there are lots of options here, and Pedego has their own bags and accessories. Everything else is is pretty much blacked out. So we've got the black saddle, the black seat post, this nice adjustable angle stem that's actually from Satori, so that part's not quite right. That's a nice upgrade because the Pro Max ones seems like they could slip a little bit. So they've, they've beefed it up. And then the handlebars black, the grips, the tires, the lights, the crank arms, even the spokes and the hubs are black. And that's something that, it's, it's easy to overlook, uh, but, but it's part of what makes their Pedagos look a little bit nicer. 
Um, so I appreciate that for sure. And these are these thicker 12 gauge spokes, front and rear, 36 hole rims, double wall, aluminum alloy, a little bit beefier. And I think we were talking about maybe the max rating is like 250, 300 pounds from Pedigo, right. but that you've had customers that weigh like 400 that have- 400, 450 pounds that have used these. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't want to make this like an official endorsement. I'm hanging out with Pa. I don't want to get him in trouble. But the, the, the point is, you know, yeah, it's it's beefier stuff. Like this is is pretty heavy duty, including those those tires that are puncture protection. You want to keep an eye on the the pressure rating because if they get too low and then you hit a curb, it can you can get kind of a snake bite where the tire pushes against the inside of the rim and it uh, it pops that that inner tube in two places and that's what looks like a snake bite. So I like that there's these rubberized. Uh, mud flaps at the end of the fenders, especially on the bigger wheels, because if you're pedaling like this and you turn, there's actually pretty good clearance here, but I've just, I've kicked the fender before myself on a couple of occasions, so I appreciate that. Nice steel rigid fork, but it's swept out a little bit more, so that's part of what's giving you the space and like a little bit more relaxed steering. Um, it tracks very well. These feel very stable. It's a steel fork, so you get some vibration dampening qualities from that. In addition to like bringing up the stem, sweeping back the bars, padded grips, padded saddle, suspension, seat post, 27.2 millimeter diameter, 350 millimeter length on this one. I, I like this. This is the EXA form. It's kind of a mid-level suspension seat post. You can get nicer ones from Connect. There's also what a SR Sun Tour has one, Thud Buster. There's a lot of options, but this one actually has adjustable preload. So if you take that out, there's like a bolt on the bottom. You can tighten it up if you're someone who's Actually, Paul, will you, will you hop on that and sit down real quick? Sure. I noticed that when Paul got on this, this one's like pretty loose. And watch when he sits down. See how it squishes down? Yeah, right. So he might he might preload it a little bit, um, and that'll give him some comfort in addition to adjusting the tire PSI. But of course, it's going to be less efficient if you're not running it at higher pressure. So I'm trying to give you some tips on how you ride. Uh, I think that's a nice option. This bike is a little bit more affordable than like we were looking at the City Commuter Black Edition before. It had a suspension fork, whereas this is a steel fork. Um, and that one was more expensive. This is $29.95 or $32.95, depending on whether you get that 15 amp hour battery. So for me, it's like, hey, I like where the motor position is. I feel like these are still pretty comfortable because of the body geometry and like the, the seat post suspension. You just don't have the suspension fork and you don't have hydraulic disc brakes. Instead, you have mechanical disc brakes from Tektro. I love these levers though. They're like four finger rubberized edge. They got the little bell integrated that keeps the cockpit clean. And then here's the rotors, 180 millimeter front and rear. That's great. That's good size. And then you have the adjustable like finger adjust tightness. Uh, so you can actually adjust reach a little bit and just sensitivity on these on these brakes. They're pretty good as far as mechanical brakes go. However, the rear brake, um, see why I'm, I'm pulling on this? That's a, a metal cable that can get stretched over time and it's rubbing on that tubing all the way. So sometimes it can take a little bit more hand effort. This feels really nice though, um, compared to hydraulic brakes. That's one of the upgrade points. I don't think you have like a mid drive with hydraulic brakes or anything at this point, right, Paul? Uh, not right now, no. Okay, <laughs> that goes constantly incremental improvements and stuff. It, it's just nice that you have the larger brake rotors because this is a bit of heavier bike and it is fairly powerful. This is the first time I've tested the Dapu mid motor and it's amazing what they've done here. It's a 500 watt nominal, over a thousand watt peak. You can use it in pedal assist mode or throttle mode and throttle overrides it. And that's nice for people who get to a stop sign or a stoplight and you just want help getting right off, starting off the line instead of, um, you know, struggling to pedal and get going and having to shift gears. I, I appreciate that in addition to shift detection. So I, I don't know if that's what this is right here. Yeah, that's correct. That's a shift detection module. So it's, it's actually wired into the motor controller. And when you're shifting gears, the motor stops and it eases off so that you don't mash the chain, the sprockets, the derailleur back here. Really appreciate that. This is 12 to 32 tooth. And we've got seven sprockets in the rear Shimano Acera. That's nice. Several steps up from entry level. Uh, the shifter up here, these are not always my favorite. It's like a huge, very easy to see and understand. There's a little sticker on it that you peel back. It shows you which gear you're in. So we've got those seven speeds. I, I'm used to like the little trigger shifters down here because I mountain bike and stuff. But if you're someone who's new to biking and maybe you're wearing gloves or something, then this one's, it's it works okay. 
Um, so I just wanted to call that out. I think one of the other reasons they use this is because sometimes there's some extra wiring and plastic down here for the twist throttle and that can get in the way and then the triggers bump into it. So I understand there's always trade-offs um, on that kind of thing. And then over here on the left, you've got the buttons well within reach and the bell. Um, so coming back down to uh, the middle of the bike, we've got a chain ring here with 38 tooth and it's got an alloy guard on it actually on one side. So that should help the chain from bouncing off to the, the outside. It could still fall off on the inside, but I haven't actually experienced that. And with a bike like this, where you're mostly on the streets, pretty smooth anyways. Um, and then the fenders and the chain cover, they're also steel like the fork. Paul was telling me that, you know, it makes them a little bit sturdier, but the risk is if you scratch them, they could get a little bit rusty over time, okay? And I do like that, you know, the fenders, they're extra wide, they give you good coverage, they match even the rims. If you do get some scratches on this, Pedego includes this nice little welcome kit that includes some touch-up paint, right? It's not the right color in this box, but the point is you have the opportunity to kind of keep the bike, keep the bike going and looking good. And then I love the, the charger they give you. This is a three amp charger. A lot of times with e-bikes, you only get a two amp charger. This thing weighs like 1.9 pounds. It's not super big. It's not the biggest or the smallest, but it's got a metal end point. So if you step on that or if it gets dropped, it's gonna survive a little bit easier. Nice booklet and everything, good support. Pedego has a bunch of different accessories. Um, you know, is there anything else that you can think of that's an accessory for these bikes that's popular, Paul? The water bottle cages and then of course our Pernier bags are incredibly popular. Yeah. Um, and then the front bags as well with the baskets and everything fits on all the bikes. I really love that you guys are doing bottle cage, you know, bosses. That's something I called out in the early days where it was like, even if you don't use it, it's nice to have it as an option. Some people put a folding lock or a water bottle or a mini pump if you don't end up having a bag, if you want to just keep the, the back portion clean. Um, I like that. You know, it's a, it's a good call out. I feel like we've touched on most of the stuff. I, I guess coming back to the motor down there, up to 95 Newton meters of torque, which is definitely the higher end. Yeah, it's incredibly powerful. You know, I think, uh, I think we're the only people out in the market uh, with a 48 volt, 500 watt throttle activated mid drive. Yeah. It's a lot going on there for a mid drive. I agree, I, you are. In fact, I've seen some kits and some other stuff, but then you're really screwing around. You don't have the nice internal routing. You don't have the warranty. What's your warranty or your? Two years two years yeah. and you have all those dealers so globally you know i travel around a lot to do these reviews i drove here from colorado and uh you know i passed to several pedagos on the way and there's there's all these cool shops you can go in and get some help and try the different sizes because the sizes on this one they're really nuanced it's like 15.25 and that's that's me measuring the seat tube length and it's because of this interesting um custom bottom bracket integration with the mid drive and then we go up to like 17 0.25 and then 17 I don't know it's all back at the site but the point the point being you get to try it you get to try it in person and, and uh, take a test ride and get some support for that so yeah we got the battery we got the motor do you know the motor controller amps on this one uh, we're running very similar to the other bikes it's, okay. it's right around 20 amps yeah which is a little bit higher and you definitely feel it but at the same time I feel like the mid drive is quieter than, than the hub motors. Would you agree or am I? It is it is incredibly quiet system. We've been really happy with it, all the configurations that we've gotten to. You guys can judge for yourself. I'll put the camera on the bike later. It was a little windy when we rode over here so I couldn't hear it quite as well. <laughs> um, but it is quiet and I mean, I just love the shift detection. And uh, you know, for me, bringing some of that weight down, getting you the quick release, it's it's really nice. It's You've preserved the classic aesthetic um, and I should talk about some of this other stuff. So this is a quill stem, so you can actually raise or lower it in addition to swiveling, and then the handlebars will swivel. There's just a ton of adjustability up that way. If we come back to the battery pack, this thing can be charged on or off the bike. I'm gonna look under here. There's a charging port right there, with a little cap, and then there's a fuse. So these batteries, they use uh, Panasonic cells, which are, they're like some of the best. Um, lithium ion then there's this toggle switch so like on off and it's got a rubber cover so it's gonna keep it like a little bit nicer and stuff if this bike gets wet and again it's pretty pretty well protected it actually slides into this plastic casing and there's this little voltage meter here so you can see how full the battery is even if it's not on the bike and Paul was telling me that they have this deep sleep mode where it looks at how full the battery is before determining whether to put it in deep sleep and then that protects the cells from getting 
discharged. Correct. Yep. Yeah, it'll be relative to the state of charge that it's left at. So, you know, if you uh, unfortunately leave it maybe with 5 or 10% uh, state of charge, what it will do is, you know, relative to that percentage, it'll go to sleep in maybe a day or, a, or two. Yeah. And then uh, that deep sleep will protect the battery pack. Okay. The reason it's important for these, like, deep sleep modes or to keep an eye on your battery pack is because, as I understand it, you know, lithium-ion cells... They don't develop memories like NICAD. Was like, that NICAD? Yeah, correct. Yeah, back in the day. So it's kind of okay if you don't always charge it full, but it, as it gets lower and lower and lower, then it can start to stress the cells, the chemistry change. So I usually, if I'm getting close to 20%, I'll charge it. And if I haven't used the bike for a month or you know, a month or two, I'll definitely charge it up then too. I try to store mine away from extreme cold, extreme heat, because right. that's tough on the cells as well. Yep. Uh, those are the tips, but you guys sell additional battery packs. We do. Heaven we, forbid. We do. We do sell additional battery packs. Something happens. So that's that's great. Uh, and then now that we're we're turned on here with the the battery pack, we'll come up to the display. It's already in the on position, but I'm going to turn it off here for a second. Oh, I turned the light on here. I'm going to turn it off. There we go. So you just tap the on button here, briefly. It comes up, it says 26 inches. That was the wheel size. There's a little power chart here that you'll get to see later when we're riding. Speed and miles per hour right now. Pedal assist level, we're in zero. And there are there are quite a few assist levels. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, and then six. Six is like throttle only mode. So be careful when you're getting on the bike, when you're getting off. It's a twist throttle. And if, you're, if you think you're just walking the bike, if you accidentally bump that, the bike could take off. Um, so just, you know, keep an eye on that. It's a little bit more advanced. Paul was showing me earlier, you can turn off the throttle if you want to. You can change the top speed. The Pedego sells globally, and so they have to comply with different markets. And right now, this is set up as class two, which means 20 mile per hour top speed throttle operation. But if we were in Europe, it would be 25 kilometers per hour, a little bit slower. All that stuff's in here if you hold the settings buttons, and then you can go through and, and change some of that. Um, alternatively, as I did before, if you tap the power button, then the lights come on, and I just want to show you that. So you got like three LEDs in the back. It's pretty sunny right now, so you can't see it. And then we've got this Spininga Ascendo, this 40 Lux headlight, pretty bright, aimable. You can kind of aim it down at the road if you want to. Uh, good position there. Feels like it's it's doing a good job. And then over here, we got trip distance right now, but if we press the set button, it goes to timer and odometer. So that's kind of it. The set stuff, do you want to briefly like walk us through those other menus, Paul? Yeah, I'll run right? you through real quick. So we'll get into the set menu. We'll hold set down for just a few seconds. And what that'll do is that will bump us into the different, the six different set levels here on this bike. So set one, we can uh, reset the trip. So there's 1.9 miles. We'll hold down for a few seconds. And we'll have the trip reset. Set two, we can set the top speed on the throttle. That's cool. So you could lower the throttle down to like five miles per hour if you wanted. Right. Uh, I, be, I believe the lowest we have the setting go to, I think, is 12. Oh, so okay. that's good. Maybe you're for your rental fleet or you have somebody older or really young that you don't want going too fast on the bike. Then you can make some little adjustments there. Okay. That's, uh, that's settings for the wheel size. We have miles per hour, kilometers an hour here. That's a good one to have, yeah. Y yep. If you're in, you know, Canada or... Somewhere where <laughs> yeah, metric, <laughs> metric versus makes, imperial. That makes a little bit more sense. Uh, so the pedal assist mode here, so what we can do is we can turn that top speed off uh, and we'll bring the top speed down to 15 miles an hour. So that's what that adjusts right there. That's just on or off. Okay. Uh, and then throttle uh, function right here, we can we can dampen that down or, or have that unlocked all the way to 20 miles an hour. Huh. So if we turn this on off, excuse me, this would bring it down to about a three mile an hour top speed. It turns it almost into like a walk mode. Right, right. Kind of thing. Okay. And then that could that could maybe maybe make this into like a class one type of bike where Absolutely. there's really no throttle mode. Absolutely. Outside yep. of walk mode. Okay. And then I think he just held set again and, and he's out. We're back out. We're out of the display. This is backlit. It's super bright right now. Bright right now. So you can't really probably see it. But it's after hours and I've just wanted to show you what the lights look like when it's a little bit darker. So I'm turning on the display and look at that nice backlight glow. So it does that right when it comes on and then you tap the power button again. And then that's also what activates the light. And I think the headlights, you know, pretty nice. This is the rear light that we were talking about with the brake uh, activation. It's, it's pretty cool. But there's one other feature. I love this feature. If you hold set and you hold the plus button, 
there's this little USB symbol, and that means that it's activated this 5 volt, 500 milliamp USB Type A standard size port. So you could mount your phone right here, or maybe additional lights, or a speaker, or even like Christmas lights. I've seen people put those on the bike. That's a lot of fun. And by having that an on off setting, they're able to reduce the phantom power draw and uh, protect the battery again. So it's just like, it's a little bit of an extra step. To me, that's a fun little secret. And I mentioned a phone a minute ago. Uh, Paul was telling me that there's this new Bluetooth enabled like app that connects the battery to your smartphone. You want to yeah, tell me about that? Yeah, so we have a Bluetooth app rolling out that'll be compatible with, with uh, our new batteries right here. And those batteries are, are shown by this black label right here or a specific label on the bottom. We okay. have that uh, online or you can contact us if you have any questions. Can someone buy the new battery even if they have the old bike? Absolutely. Wow, so it's it's connected to the battery and then you can use this app thing. Yep, and what the app will do is it'll give you turn-by-turn uh, -turn navigation, has social features interacted with it. Uh, so if you want to share pictures of your bike or the route or the ride you've yeah, done, cool. you can share that with everybody. And for those of you that are part of the Pedego e-bike owners group, there's a lot of that and everybody loves sharing and it's, a real, it's really fun. Um, and then uh, there's service through it as well. And so if you, you know, if you do have an issue, if something comes up, you can post a ticket through that. We'll take a look at it. We can see everything going on with the battery and help diagnose the issue. Fantastic. And the cool thing about smartphone apps is that as they, you know, offer more features, you just update your phone. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. It's I love gonna, this. It's going to be stuff. really cool. It's very cool. Uh, I feel like maybe we've, we've hit. There's one, there's one special thing. There's about something this bike. else I forgot. And it's, it's little, but it's, but it's pretty cool. Okay. So this is our first bike. It has brake activated. Oh yeah. Light. That's right. I can see it lighting up. That's, that's awesome. So in addition to being motor inhibiting, which means you accidentally twist on the throttle, or you're still pedaling and you, you want to stop. If, as long as you're pulling those brake levers, the, the motor stops mm -hmm. and people can tell that you're trying to stop because your brake light's flashing. Yep. yep. Thanks, Paul. Absolutely. I'm glad you're here helping out, <laughs> getting all the details. Oh, so some things that I don't like, this big kickstand's right in the middle of the bike and when you pedal backwards or if you walk the bike, it collides. I say that about like a lot of these cruiser bikes from Pedego. I kind of wish it was back here, but then we were talking about maybe why they didn't mount it there. And part of it is to, to balance out that this bike is heavier and it's got the fenders and you know, so having it at the middle, I think is a strength thing. It is adjustable length. So right now we have it propped up pretty straight because we were doing photos. Um, and I think it's just something to keep your eye on. Also with the bigger disc brake, they're just, it was crowded back here. So they didn't, uh, I didn't do that. I noticed that compared to the hub motor uh, rear dropout, this is 135 millimeter hub spacing versus 142. So that's, it's a minor, minor thing. This also uses the nine millimeter quick release skewers versus a threaded axle and nuts. You know, so there's just a couple little differences here. Even though these bikes look the same, um, you know, they've really dialed it in so that the experience is great uh, and, and really purpose built. I think that's it. Now are we good? I think we're good. We good? Okay. Yeah. I, I'm going to take this one on a little ride around and just show the motor and stuff and then we can ride together. Sounds good. Okay. Okay guys, I was about to hop on and then Paul and I were talking about how the connectors have actually been upgraded here and see how there's like a little red right there. Um, is that the brakes? Yeah. So both of the brakes have color coded connections with a threaded connection. And, and a also, washer, like also, a rubber washer. Yeah, so we wanted to make things as water resistant as possible and uh -huh. edging on waterproof. Yeah. Um, and easy to, to identify and replace if needed. So, huh. I mean, it's just reality. Sometimes you need to replace things. So we want to make it really easy to do all that. That is nice. That is very nice. Um, I, I have seen before sometimes people steer really hard. See how I'm turning to the right and the cables are getting stretched. And if you don't have the nicer connectors, they can just pop. And then you're like, what happened? My bike stopped. So these aren't going to disconnect as easily. They're going to keep out water. Like Paul was saying, I'm going to hop on this thing. When I want to call out the paddles, these are the big Welgos. They've got the fixed pins, but just a little bit stiffer, a bit more surface area. So that if it is wet where you ride, hopefully you're not going to lose traction. Um, we help me raise the saddle here. There we go. So we've got a quick release. I've got long legs, so it's nice to get the full leg extension. And I could hear the chain bouncing just a little bit and maybe touching on that uh, chain cover, the protector over there. That happens frequently, but the fenders actually do feel really, um, really solid. They're not rattling a whole lot. That's one of the trade-offs if you have plastic fenders. They sort of spring back, but they rattle a little bit more. 
And then the pedal assist on this bike is pretty dynamic. So if I go down to five, that's the highest level. It's it's like a cadence and torque sensor. So it's a bit it's a bit more fluid and natural. It's not just on off feeling. I'm gonna try to do this. pretty good. Okay guys, from here you can see that uh, chain cover, can listen for the fenders, I'm gonna ride over some bumps, and, and then just the motor and how sort of quickly it starts and stops when I'm in pedal assist. I'm gonna start in pedal assist level five, it's the highest, and then I'm gonna do throttle mode and I'm gonna shift gears and just, I'm just amazed by that shift detector. I, I really think that's cool. It's nice to have, right? Here we go. Part of what I was doing there was pushing harder or being more gentle and just trying to get a feel for that the torque sensor because I think it's torque and cadence combined and it, it it is more of a it's not quite as refined as like the Broza motor or some of the Bosch motors where it, it, it feels a little bit more on off um, but but it's definitely there and it's it's more subtle than just the pure cadence sensors on a lot of the uh, older Pedego bikes. A lot of the new ones with the hub motors, they still have cadence or torque sensing options. So I feel like this is pretty great for mid drive. Now I'm gonna do that shifting experiment where I'm using a throttle and I'm shifting gears and listen for it starting and stopping. upright body position. When you're holding the handlebars like this, there's no problem with that wobble, but if I take them off, you can see that there's a little bit of shake starting to happen. That's speed wobble. So, you know, it takes a minute to develop, but you can start to see it again. So just be careful with that, specifically on the step through frames, okay? The high step might not happen as much. It's mostly this one. And then having those brake lever inhibitors are really nice because you know, again, anytime I pull those, I don't have to worry about that motor kicking in. Or you can ride in the free ride mode, which is just zero, and then pedal assist is off, the throttle is off. I actually really like, uh, I like level six. Oh boy. I like level six because it's throttle only, and the throttle is really smooth and dynamic. So I'm just twisting a little bit, just going a couple miles per hour and then I can juice it, get a little bit more. Just keep in mind again that your top speed is gonna be kinda limited or impacted by the gear that you're pedaling in. Paul's got his sunglasses on, he's ready to ride. <laughs> I think we're just gonna go out and spend some time next to each other, showing what these look like third person. Well guys, I think that's about it. We've had a lot of fun riding out here, exploring the neighborhood. For the full ride up on these bikes, including the standover height, some of the other details I measured, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, have fun out there. Sound off with your comments and your feedback. 
and ride safe.